What was that? <laughs> what what I was said. that? Jeez. Listen, let's let's cut through the BS to to favor a better better term, right? Because I'm seeing lots of this. I'm seeing lots of interviews where there's deflection and people pointing over here and pointing over there to try and confuse our audience and trying to dilute a very, very serious situation. First and foremost, from Connor Ben's point of view, because I know that he gave an interview last week to The Times and The Sun, didn't he? And he's, he's talked in there and, 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 and said various things, confirming that he's failed not one, but two tests, right? Connor Ben is guilty of having a performance enhancing drug in his system. As per VADA, not once, but twice. A test that he did in July, which came back in August, and then a test that he did at the start of September, which came back, on the, on the 23rd of September. He's also guilty of ignoring the first test. The attitude towards that failed first test from everybody involved is absolutely frightening. Now, the process going forward of what is going to happen, his legal team are going to present a plausible reason to the WBC, and the WBC will dish out some type of punishment. Don't hold your breath, because the WBC last year tried to, in a very similar situation, on, and actually succeeded, proceed with a fight involving Oscar Valdez, who also failed a drug test, and they cracked on because they believed that the drug that he got uh, tested for and failed for wasn't a performance enhancing drug test. Uh, drug uh, uh, on the, It's absolute nonsense. Yeah. There's, there, it's on the ban, ban list for a reason. I'm hearing people say trace amounts, levels, wait for the science. The science is the test. The science is the test. He's failed the test because he's exceeded the levels that VADA have already put out there. So that's him. That'll, that'll be the situation with Conor Ben, and that'll get dealt with. The more worrying thing for me, as you've just been speaking to Callis Allen there, several significant figures in British boxing tried to proceed with a fight, were happy, were comfortable to proceed with a fight that had a fighter going into that fight that had failed multiple drug tests. And just to put on top of that, in this fight, a fighter weighing in at a career low with a deb debilitating rehydration clause. And everybody seemed to be comfortable with that situation. My conclusions with it, and we'll get to promoters in a minute, but my conclusions with it are that British Boxing Border Control are not fit for purpose. One of, the, one of the two statements that I'm about to make is true. And both of them are incredibly worrying from a British Boxing Board of Control point of view. Were they powerless in that situation to do anything? Or were they comfortable with the situation to ultimately then just lose their bottle in fight week when public found out about it in order to then prohibit the fight? They need, we need to get rid of the British Boxing Board of Control. We need a new control body in control of boxing, government backed, we need to be moving forward because right now it is not fit for purpose and a danger to the sport. The, the actual boxing board of control is a danger to the sport. Absolutely. I mean, well, think about it. They are the, they are the sanctioning body in, in our country, right? They knew at, in, in August that a fighter entering a fight on October the 8th had failed a test. Yeah. Yeah. Why was the fight not pulled then? Why was, the, why was the brakes not pumped right there and then? Why did they not say, well, hang on a minute, that's against the rules. He, 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 he's, he's flagged the test here. So let's. So I were mean, they it, powerless it, in that situation? They'll, they'll say that they were powerless. We couldn't do anything because it yeah. wasn't a UCAD test. That's what they'll say. Okay, fair enough. So if they were powerless, they're yeah. not fit for purpose. Well, they are the sanctioning Adam, body in the country. Adam, it sounds like you've come to have lost all faith in the sport you love. We, absolutely, with the British Boxing Board of Control. Listen, all this year I've been talking about the British Boxing Board of Control. If you go all the way back to Taylor Catterall and the way that that fight ended up playing out and the, and the way that the British Boxing Board of Control ignored the advice of the WBO when they were suggesting officials to be involved in that fight and they just cracked on and did what they wanted. There's loads of things. Oh, you look I, at the, I, the, I the way they handled Bradley Skate. About. Absolutely. I could sit here all day talking about them, but this is just the straw that brought the camels back. If they were powerless in that situation, they are not fit for purpose. And if they were comfortable with the situation, that is incredibly worrying. Something needs to be done because that is I a worrying situation format, for Adam. us to go forward. I, I think the tail wags the dog. I think you've got some very high powerful people with deep pockets that would have pushed the British board, boxing ball back on their heels after the first test and cited the legality of the UCAD position and pushed hard on that. And then when the second test came in, it was very difficult for them to get around it. And then the British boxing board of control or whoever it was found a way to get this into the press.
and allegations have been made that Robert Smith dropped it himself. I have my views on that, but notwithstanding it, one way or another, British Boxing Board of Control managed to find the courage of their convictions. I called them like a neutered dog mm. that managed to grow a set of balls for once. I mean, to be fair, Robert Smith pushed back in that, Simon, with us, as, as you would well, expect said, him well, to do. Said, no, he didn't. He said, I disagree with that. That's, yeah. that's not the same as saying no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. And there's been all sorts of scandalous allegations that come out of it, uh, Adam, not least Eddie Hearn insinuating that maybe Chris Eubank Sr. Uh, should not have been in a, in a position whereby members of the media like ourselves would gain access to Eubank Sr. and get his view of what he thought his son was going into. Chris Eubank Sr. sounded perfectly sound of mind when he spoke to me. Absolutely perfectly of sound of mind when he spoke to me. Absolutely. Why, why would you not want his opinion? Exactly. He's, 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 an, he's an esteemed... Forget that he's obviously got a, a, a family tied to the fight. He's an esteemed member of the boxing community. Why would you not want his opinion on it? So if you... Listen, I don't, from, from a promoter point of view, you just had Calla. This is how we got to this situation, listening to what Calla was saying there. Everybody's trying to wash their hands of it and, and point things in a different yeah, direction, yeah. saying that contractually we couldn't pull the fight. What's, what? You made the contract, guys. That's right. It was your contract. Are you telling me that there's no terms and conditions within your contract that you could have worked to, worked against in order to pull that fight? Yeah. If, that, if, that's, if that's true, go and have a word with your legal team and make better contracts. But we both know, because... Adam, that a failed drugs test would have frustrated a contract. It might not have been governance, and it's a technicality. They're all hiding behind technicalities and deflections. They're all hiding upon, you know, subterfuge and misrepresentations. Don't look over here, look over there. Look what happened to Billy Joe Saunders. Aha, that's his example. No, it's not. It's a completely different scenario. That's an out-of-competition right. drug. This is a drug that's been banned full stop. We all know, and people are dancing around it, and then when people don't dance around it, what they try to do is ridicule them or parody them and say they shouldn't be involved in talking about boxing and they're Johnny come lately because yeah. they don't like the questions. It's really, really simple. Two influential promoters with a huge fight with huge returns sought to overcome a failed drugs test to put a fight on. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.